Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We today arrive at the finale of the grinding at Le Mans. We've been doing it for 20 cars. Uh, I've probably overplanned it and I've probably got two more, which may follow on with subsequent videos, but we've got to the point where every car in the race has its own custom car. And we're now ready to take upon the custom race for which we will attempt to run another car against all those custom cars being run by AI. What we are well aware of is that the AI that are running those cars that we've run on fuel map 6, fuel saving will not. So they will probably pit every lap. So we have to be aware of that and try and make it somewhat of a race. So how about a car that also might have to pit every lap, A for fuel or for tyres? That would be interesting to pitch us against those. However, the Nissan Silvia Q your average Japanese family car, which I saw of in the UK probably back in 91, 92, and then again probably 96, 97, when, when friends started to own these cars. This one though is an engine swap. Settings will be, it contains the LS7 BRZ, it's a rear wheel drive, it's turbocharged, and it comes in at 679.78 pp with racing hard tyres. It will be absolutely spot on 700 if you change those to softs. It's got 1,195 brake horsepower. It's an absolute monster. We've got front lip, side skirts, rear valance, and we've got the high level rear 20, rear wing 20 end plates. And we've got custom wheels that are set as wide fitment, not wide wheels. You can choose whichever wheels you want. These are white ones with five spokes, whatever they are. We're so far away from the target on the hard tyres that you need to have the hard tyres that you can run any wheels you want as long as you don't interfere with the balance of the car. So, trimmed and settings, fully, sus fully customisable suspension, nothing adjusted. Fully customisable rear diff set to 555. Downforce on the front 183295 on the rear as you can see fully tuned for maximum downforce ECU 100 no restrictions transmission racing set to 420 and you could probably take a couple of knocks on top of that if you want to save a bit more fuel high RPM turbo now you don't have to run that high RPM turbo you'd probably use less fuel but it's as exciting as it gets with a high RPM turbo there is an ultra which you could choose to run brake system racing system brake balance controller is in there and we're going to set that all the way to the front because there's going to be pain on the rear tires racing flywheel carbon prop shaft we've got all the weight reductions there are no available ending tuning parts and then we've got increased body rigidity let's get to the track well, let's get to the race in this case because this is a custom race so for those of you that have never done the custom race and you haven't joined us before at this point, we take the option down here, custom race. Full length course, and then we're going to load settings. We've already got this set up as Le Mans 30 minutes. And then on the right hand see it's set to endurance for 30 minutes. We have 20 cars. As we can see, rolling start is selected. However, as you can see, we have a slight bug here. If we try and set this to anything else, it only sets 15 meters. So if we're going to grid start this, it will actually make it a much better spacing and much easier to run the race. Boost is off, slipstream real, mechanical damage none. Tire wear set to times 10, which is what the actual race is. Fuel consumption set to times 6. Refueling we've guessed at times 7. I don't think we're far off. Grip reduction off track is real and there's no nitrous. Custom weather, which I think we know we're going to have to set. We set the time of day in the afternoon. There's no preset weather and equal conditions not available. Variable time is set accordingly because you could do the 24 hours in a day, I guess. But here we go. Here's the custom weather. We've chosen SO1, bright and sunny at the start. It's gone cloudy in the second phase of the race. In the third phase of the race, so this is 10 to 15 minutes we've set it to random we've got random between 15 and 20 minutes and we're back to co4 cloudy 
for the for 20 to 25 and for 25 to 30 we're back to sunshine so we know we're going to get rain in the middle of the day or we're going to get weather we don't know what rain we're going to get however rivals are selected from garage and we're on professional level so when we go to the garage here we can then choose the first racer i've set these up to replicate the starting grid we can then change the car you can pick any car you want from the garage in this case mr blazan got the toyota sfr racing concept and so forth if you need to adjust the driver name so you can match it to whatever name you want you can change the name accordingly and set the region now i haven't set the regions for all these people i've set them where i know but I was trying to scoot through this quite quickly. If you want to pay attention to it and set it how exactly you want to, you can set everything accordingly as you see fit. Happy days. We get the Nissan Silvia at the bottom and click apply. You can then save those settings. And then close to start race. And here we arrive at the World Touring Car 700, the Circuit de la Sarthe. It's a 30-minute race representing just 30 minutes of the official race itself. The settings will be Assist, Stretch Control 1, Default ABS. I actually think it would be best to set that Stretch Control 5 before we go anywhere, but we'll do that in race. ABS is set to Default. We've got ASM on and Counter Seer Assistant Strong. Controller settings will be controller steering sensitivity 5, force feedback max torque 5, force feedback sensitivity 6. On the premise that I use a G29 and those settings are particular to me, they could be different for you, so feel free to choose what you want. So, custom race, round Le Mans for 30 minutes. We've got the potential two periods of rain, bank smack between 10 minutes and 20 minutes, with some drying up time and bright sunshine at the end. We know some of these cars are going to be extremely fast, but we've bought a machine gun to a knife fight. It's, it's a howitzer. This thing is absolutely insane. It goes very, very quickly, 240 miles an hour, and it takes that amount of time to stop. So be prepared for that, and you'll burn through tires and the fuel in two laps. So are you ready? Let's go. Here we go then folks, fuel map to 6, traction control to 5. And we're away, filing past the cars we've already used so far in this series. The weather's looking good. There's a few cars we're expecting to be really competitive. We're boxed in here. I'm going to follow Mr. Cookerman in the 787B Mazda 3. Oh, we're behind the uh, engine swap R34. Oh, we're getting sandwiched by that and the F40. And behind that is the Camaro NASCAR. What an absolute... I was going to say mess of historic cars from this little series. Oh, oh, squeezed past the 787B again. Oh, the MC20's pulled out. We're going up for 230. 240 mile an hour on the brakes. Coming down the outside in third place. What a heroic move. The question is, are we in a position to get this to go three laps on the outlap? I don't think so. I think we've, uh, we've absolutely blown the fuel, so it's going to be two laps. We don't know what the uh, weather's going to be like, which is going to be the hinge for this. definitely going to get two laps out of this thing it is an absolute monster 240 mile an hour as proven and it's got more in it if you turn it up to 
to fuel map one but it is tuned to fuel map six because there's just no way to harness all that power two point three well call it three seconds in the lead already as you come barreling down this straight again above 200 mile an hour 230 on the brakes deep into that corner whoa just making it stop you really have got to break much earlier than you anticipate so we have a six second lead almost we're on the hard tires they're looking good for the certain two laps the traction control just cutting in manages to uh, rein the car in on the brakes again down to third gear for this corner 100 mile an hour 110 maybe now I think we're going to be pushing eight laps some people say the eighth lap isn't required but unfortunately this is the custom race and depending on how fast the 787b engine cars go depends on how fast we've got to go a lot of the cars that are on engine swaps are going to be forced to pit stop every lap but they are always going to be immensely quick we've just missed that apex have we just caught that in time have we going to get a penalty penalties are attributed differently in this race to the standard race they are on the motion penalties rather than a, the fixed line there we go there's the uh, engine swap guys going in for their their fuel up quite messy into this up at this complex an outlap under four minutes see if we can absolutely nail this three 240 mile an hour down here we're 20 seconds ahead of his al and cookerman feels like it's starting to gray over now Looking for that breaking point, 240 mile an hour, there it is. Second gear at 110. Let's uh, put the fuel map, the uh, weather map on. Not seeing any rain as yet, but it is definitely misting up. We're over five minutes into the race. 230 at the breaking point. at the total sign if I was to be critical of anything of this car it would be its brakes it doesn't seem to be have the ability to slow down from such a massive speed it would need a brake upgrade to something like carbon ceramic discs would be awesome we're going to hit 230 mile an hour again. There we go, and on the brakes. Is the track going to pick up a, a wet look to it? We can see the heavy clouds coming in. Can't see anything on the radar just yet. We are now 30 seconds ahead of Mr. Hizal and Mr. Cookerman. Those two chaps with both 787B engines. In the RX-7 and the uh, Mazda 3. 
3.11 at this point. This is going to be a 3.45 lap if we weren't to pit. We just don't have the fuel at this point to be able to run the lap. The only time we're going to be able to run that lap is in the eighth lap, the final lap of the race. Now there's no rain on the uh, on the radar as we go into the pit. Look at that, 22-22. So that's two laps in under eight minutes. We're going to take the hard tyres again. Why does it look like it's raining? It's definitely a wet look to the tarmac. Looking for divine help to understand what weather is coming down. Are we going to hear the two rotaries go past? We can hear something. We, as we enter the pits... Got a little bit of damage on the front. We can hear them winding up. Here we go. His Alan Cookerman both go charging past. We're taking the fuel. They're out and away towards the complex. There we go. We've taken all the fuel. They're 11 seconds ahead, 12 seconds ahead. Still no rain on the rain radar. We must be pretty equal round through this complex. This is where we start to Oh, we might get a penalty there if we transgress by the wheel. The sun's back out again. Transition back from gloomy overcast skies to full on flat out. Are we going to hit 240? 240 on the brakes. is down to 7.9 seconds definitely a wet look to the track 233 miles an hour we're taking all the fuel at each pit stop to make sure we've got the fuel to get to the next one duking it out for the lead aren't they this car now we've tamed it we've toned it down we've given it FM6 we put the uh, traction control all the way to 5 we've really clipped its wings and we've got it quite drivable the setup is really quite handleable but those more skilled could be able to drive this untamed it would be an absolute flying machine. And the two cars in front are absolutely flying too. They don't have this top end, but my, my. That's them just put behind. definitely into the weather window when we've got um, sunshine and clouds so it's not too bad a weather result we've got one more period of weather between 15 and 10 remaining we're just a second ahead but these guys have got to go to the pits now I'm pretty sure this is where we'll start to bust out that lead made it through there without a penalty
The Hellpaid lights in the bottom right hand corner are going like disco lights at the moment. So his owl carried on, Cookerman went to the pits. Be interesting to see which of those two gets fastest. One trying the undercut over the other. charging away going to try and get up to that 240 mile an hour mark there it is on the brakes again the opening lap at 358 Fastest lap of the race is a Mr. Hizal, 4.01.612. We're currently five seconds up on that. We've only done 25% of the circuit. The last lap of the race, lap number eight, will be proving that we have the capability to do something of a 3.45. Currently we're on a 3.52, but we're pitting the end of this lap. We're coming to the end of the 15th minute. We are almost 10 seconds up, so that's a, a 3.51 almost. Mr. Hazal is now some 12 and a half seconds back. We're driving this with caution. And we're just making sure we get it round. It's great to have a wholly dry race. We just have to see what the next five minutes bring. It looks bright and clear. Traction control just cutting in. Coming round to meet the camera copter again. The usual low fuel warning on our inlap. We've got two pit stops to go. We've got this and one more. Just gone past the halfway stage. Very wet in the pit lane. We're going to take the hards. We're going to let it fuel up. Is Mr. Hazal going to follow us in? 17.7 seconds behind us. Will he be able to go on for lap five? That we do not know. No, he's in the pits behind us. We're then looking back to Mr. Manjano and Mr. Cookerbun to see where they are. Oh, they're much further back now. They're just coming through the complex. We have 0.3 of a lap remaining. So that means we're using... Well, we'd have to fill up to 2.7 or 1... Well, we'd have to take it all. I can't do the math. Hizal has gone ahead of us in the pit lane. And we are going to be 55 seconds ahead of Manjana, who's come to the pits. Is Kukabun carrying on? There's the question. Or is Kukabun pitting? Kukabun should be another lap into his stint. Kukabun's 35 seconds, 18 seconds back. 
this is by means not over this is still a race brand new tyres the track certainly looks like it's damped up there's no indication of any wet on the track but it definitely looks it so, going to hit that magic 240. Every lap. There it is, looking for the braking marker. Changing it to fifth at 185 miles an hour, it's absolutely insane. 230 on on the brakes. The helicopter waiting for us. That downdraft just off the line, drying the track. He's not going to chase us down the park though, is he? He's not going to have the power to keep with us. We're 23 seconds into the lead now. Going to break just after the total sign. Just focusing in, just enjoying the engine note, making sure I keep the car in, ha in, in hand. I think that's the phrase I'm looking for. It's all very drivable. Trying to get myself that pit stop as well in hand. Mr. Hazal's going to have to pit again soon, maybe the same time as us next time round. different line through there this time a little bit late on the brakes that time so we should be out of the second weather area pushing hard on now 10 minutes remaining like Ooh. do we get a telling off from the stewards there we do two point oh eight up let's get rid of that penalty now Helicopter, we're chasing him down, and away we go. Outstripping him at 230. Will we get to 240? We won't this occasion. Miss McEwen has gone to the pit lane. I'm looking at the clock and thinking, right, there's just under eight minutes to go. Do we really have to do that eighth lap? Oh, 
we are 30 seconds ahead we're going to get round there with four minutes remaining as we come out of the pit we might be able to just make this a seven lapper but there will be a race on so we're going to take the fuel for the eighth lap with three seconds up mr cookman has the fastest lap a 3.54, we're currently on for 3.51. The smart driver amongst us will say, run for the seventh lap. Aim to win it on the seventh lap. But I don't know if we've got that gap, you know. I don't know if we've got it. Mr. Cookerman has overtaken Mr. Hazal again. They look to be running together. We have got to pit stop. We don't have that ability to to just back it down and coast this last lap. Excuse me. There is uh, too much of too much time left. It's very grey, it's very moist. There's a definite slipperiness to the circuit. But no rain whatsoever. Into the pit lane then. New tyres, new boots, two more laps. Hoping for just one more, but it looks like it's going to have to be hard to take all the fuel. We finish with point three again. It looks like we could take 83. If we took 90% of fuel, would that be good enough to get us out and away? Potentially give us the opportunity? We're not too far away from lapping somebody by the looks of it. Here's those two cars. What's going to happen? Kukabun's come in. His owl's gone on to take the lead, so we're going to have to chase his owl. We have no option but to go for it. We're taking the fuel. We're going to go to the 90. There's five minutes remaining. The sun's come out. 94. He's 12 seconds ahead. Cookerman is in the pits, not taking the fuel yet. But his Al is the man. There he goes. It looks like the Spirit RX-7. He's now five seconds ahead. There he is. We're going to leave him like a sitting duck, aren't we? We're going to fly past him. Like he's standing still. But at this point we can't. We've got 3 minutes 40. Will we be able to win this by just rolling across the line? I don't think so. This is going to have to go to the 8th lap. He's only 5 seconds behind us.
the only opportunity we're going to get to set the fastest lap is going to be on that eighth lap look at those lap times 412 with a pit stop 406 with a pit stop 408 with a pit stop 407 with a pit stop 415 with a pit stop the sun's definitely out making the track sticky for these hard tires we're 10 seconds ahead there's two minutes to get back to the line there's no way in the world we can rope a dope this and make it a seven lap race it has to go for the eight unfortunately We are going to try and set the fastest lap. Something in the realms of a 3.45. Yeah, if we were to hang on now, we've got 1 minute 24 until the end of the lap. He's only 11 seconds back. It's not going to happen. We're actually physically going to lap a car. And there we go. This is the start of that lap. That was a 4.05.990. With the pit out, that was pretty good. Is that the Civic? Still got to move on, hasn't it? So that's a 352 potential at this time. He's getting the flags. He's moved out the way, off the racing line. Mr. Gallo, unfortunate. 240 miles an hour. We're purple by four seconds. That's your 350. Mr. Manjano's taken the flag already. We're 19 seconds ahead of his Al. Got, we've got no fuel. How is it we've got no fuel? 0 0.7 of a lap. We only have to go from 0 0.5. Oh, it worries me. We're 6.3 seconds ahead. So that's a 3.48. Fuel's good, actually. We only need 0 0.5 at the bottom of this hill. because we're slowing the car down with the high rev range, isn't it? Seven seconds up, so that's a 358. 348. It's so difficult to do the maths when you're feeling under pressure. As we come out the cloud, just going to slow and break down. There's a 3.45, maybe. The eighth lap had to be done, which isn't great for grinding, because it takes us well over, but it's not the slowest car, it's the fastest, it's not the slowest race time either. But it's a real good, easy drive. I appreciate we've got all the help aids on, but hey, as I've said it before, there we go, almost 10 seconds quicker. Fuel is absolutely on the money, we called that right. 
even though we were worried about the fuel. As rear tyres are just starting to show, going to break just before the start of that entry. A 43. Absolutely phenomenal. Well, I don't think I need to sell this car to anybody. It is a surprise out of the box. It's phenomenal. One thing we did get was good weather. A 32-38 for the entire race. Only three cars finished on the lead lap. Mr. Kukabun and Mr. Hizal. Both in the um, 787B engine swap cars. Mr. Manjano finished in fourth in the GTR with the R92 engine. The 308 GTB finished in fifth, followed by the Sierra, the RS Cosworth, then the M3, then the Fair Lady. The Hiara, the Wyra, sorry, in ninth place, finishing ahead of the Mercedes AMG, which finished ahead of Mr. Mendoza and the MC20. The XJ220 came in in 12th. Then the Super Engine Swap, then the F40, then the Julia, Guilia, whichever. Then the 918 Spider. That surprised me, but it was heavy on fuel. He'd have been stopping every lap. Then the Cayman GT4 non-engine swap. I don't think we included the engine swap in this race. The, then the Camaro, which is a disappointment. I would have thought that would have done better. Then the SF Racing Concept with Mr. Blazan in 19th and dragging up the back of the field. The Civic Type R, which to me should have been two laps down, but if he made the seventh lap, he did all right. We don't get a massive amount of credits. We're closing in on the 25 million. Done 412 miles for the day. And there she is. That concludes the series at Le Mans. As we go off again, you see the whole field pull off the standing start. We go across the start line last. But it goes like a bullet from a gun. Absolutely tremendous. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that series, folks. I certainly did. I've still got a couple more cars I want to do for this. But if you want to rearrange that field, you want to choose your own cars to go in this race, it's a great way to break up the grind, even though it's not a massive amount of cash. I really enjoy these custom races. It throws in a different twist and it's a different way to enjoy the game. But with that, folks, if you've got anything for me, any feedback, anything you want to say, any recommendations for cars you want, and don't forget, as we go into a new series, we need to understand which it is we want to do in update 1.40. So we'll see you on the next one. All the best, folks. Take care.